talk about it almost every night, how politics seems to have gotten a bit more divisive, and no one knows this better than Republican Congressman Steve Scullies. He was shot over a year ago on a baseball field, of course, practicing for a game that was intended to unify both parties. We've watched ev almost every step of the congressman's road to recovery, but there's still a lot we don't know about him. Martha sat down with the House Majority Whip, Steve Scullies, author of Back in the Game, where he shares his untold story. Congressman Scalise, go down. We are just learning Louisiana Congressman and House Majority Whip Steve Scalise has been shot. I was the first out to Steve. He laid out there for at least 10 minutes yeah, alone in the field, and we just we couldn't get to him while there were shots. The heroes are the police officers who who attacked the shooter. Um, and in doing so, quite probably, saved many, many lives. I called my my wife and my children. I told them I love you. Justices coming to these and Dad's okay. Not just members of Congress and senators. What do you think about that story? People don't know or don't understand. Well, you know, for for three and a half months, I was in the hospital, and especially those first few weeks. I was in and out of consciousness and surgeries and you know, truly battling for my life. And I think in the first few days, people didn't know just how serious it was and uh, you know, that I had literally come at least twice that first day to, to not making it and, uh, and all the miracles that happened along the way. And, uh, you know, and just how both myself but so many other people that were out on that ball field uh, could have easily, uh, could have been a really bad ending. You have a lot of people in this country who feel like these are extraordinary times and that they have to go to the most extreme measures to make their point, to resist, to push back. Um, that's not an acceptable answer in politics. And, you know, look, we, we've had even tougher times in our nation's history. I mean, I work in a living history museum in the United States Capitol, and I, I have a room in one of my offices that Abraham Lincoln used to, mm -hmm. to spend time in. And I renamed it the Lincoln Room just because I wanted people to, to sense that history that we're all a part of, but that we also ought to reflect back on and say, you know, as tough as times are today, they had a lot tougher times then. You know, I mean, Abraham Lincoln gave his life for the cause of, of freeing, uh, freeing people from slavery. When you think about what happened to Abraham Lincoln, and that man wanted to do that to you that day on yeah, the baseball did. field. He didn't. Thank God he didn't. Thank, thanks through the grace of God and through a lot of hero, uh, heroic acts. And I talk about that in the book. I mean, of course, David Bailey and Crystal Griner, the two Capitol Police officers who were there with me who risked their lives, both were shot during the shootout and kept going at it until they took the shooter down. They, Alexandra police, the, you know, the, and again, there were, it was not just me, there was over a dozen other members of Congress and some staffers and volunteers that were there too that would have all been executed uh, had it not been for uh, those little miracles as we refer to them and, and the heroes too that we saw that day. You made a friend that you didn't expect to make through this whole process, somebody that you were a big fan of uh, who was really good to you, Mono. Oh my gosh! <laughs> there were there were so many of those interesting stories. Right. I, look, and I was a high school student. U2 was was probably my favorite band. And I went and saw them in concert uh, back in the mid '80s when they were just starting. And uh, and I was going to go see them the week after the shooting. My son was going to be coming to D.C. and uh, they were going to play a concert over at FedEx Field. And uh, of course, I didn't get to go to that concert, and yet Bono, during the concert, uh, gave a uh, gave an opening prayer at the beginning. They were reprising the Joshua Tree, which is a great album, and he, he said a prayer uh, for me and asked everybody to pray for me. And all of a sudden, you know, my wife's phone is blowing up. We're in the hospital, and and she's looking. It's during the concert, and all of our friends are sending this this footage of Bono saying this prayer for me. We are so grateful that Congressman Scalise and his comrades made it through. And then he called the next day, and uh, he went by my office just to uh, to sign a card and to take pictures with my staff and to cheer them up. Mm -hmm. And then he called me at the hospital, and uh, he, he just was. We had a wonderful conversation, and uh, and he he invited me to the concert. They were playing about two months later in the Superdome, and I was hoping to be out of the hospital by then, and literally didn't get out. But for like a week later, so I had to miss that concert. But then uh, he uh, he and I got to meet up again in person. 
uh, about, a, about a year later and spent some real quality time together. They, they just bring you through really dark, dark and tough times that you have, you know, and you, you go through ups and downs in a, in a journey like this. And uh, they, that really helped uh, keep us going strong the whole way through. Looking back, how do you think all of this changed you? You know, it's 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 not that it changed my outlook on life, but it, it changed what's important in life. Uh, I've always been a an easygoing, happy-go-lucky guy. Uh, you know, my motto has always been work hard, play hard, and and, sacrifice, and and celebrate the wins along the way. Because, you know, for everything you do in all of our lives, you know, your life is fast-paced, and something good happens, and then the next minute you're on to something else, you know, it's important to reflect as well when you when you achieve something, one of your goals, uh, to uh, to celebrate that and then start working towards the next one. And, and we all have setbacks in our life too, and, and you can't spend too much time reflecting on the setbacks, and you know, you've gotta to work towards the next thing you've got to do. But I, I love my family, I love the things that I uh, do and that are important to life, and I think it focused even more uh, on what those things are that are really important and that matter. Ground ball to second is Scalise throws him out at first. Still brings chills. That's the story for tonight. You can catch me this weekend.